Thank you. Our next witness is Art Acevedo, who serves as the chief of the Houston Police Department and also serves as president of the Major Cities Chiefs Association. Chief Acevedo received his BS in Public Administration from the University of Laverne. Chief Acevedo, you may begin. Thank you, Chairman. Ms. Underwood, Mr. Floyd, I'm follow up. Condolences. Know that we're lifting you in our prayers. Chairman Nadler, Ranking Member Jordan, and members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to participate virtually in today's hearing. It's good, it's good to be with all of you, and especially my Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee and Congresswoman Garcia. I want to thank Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee and Congresswoman Bass for their leadership. As the Major State Chiefs Association reviews the Justice and Policing Act, please know that we support the intent and look forward to working with the committee. I appear before you today as the Chief of Police in Houston, Texas, and it is also my privilege to testify on behalf of the Major City Chiefs Association as their president. No matter the circumstance, every time a life is taken, a loved one is taken. George Floyd was a child of God and raised in Houston. His death was deeply disturbing and a shock to the conscience. Over the past few days, I've had the opportunity to meet with the Floyd family and I will continue to lift them in prayer. Mr. Floyd, thank you to you and your family for allowing us to join you on your brother's journey home. There is no denying that changes in policing must be made. Out of crisis comes opportunity, and this is an opportunity for all of us to have some tough conversations, to listen, to learn, to an, and to enact meaningful reform that is long overdue. As a profession, we must learn what is being shared with us. That includes being honest about our history. We must acknowledge that law enforcement's past contains institutional racism, injustices, and brutality. We must acknowledge that policing has had a disparate treatment and impact on disenfranchised communities, especially communities of color and poor communities. Several topics have risen to the forefront and all reforms must be vetted and ensure to ensure that they are sustainable, effective, and have no unintended consequences. Several topics have, law enforcement plays an important role. No two calls for service are the same. And in Houston, we respond to an average of 1.2 million calls for service annually. Those calls disproportionately originate from communities of color. If we are going to talk about better policing, we also need to talk about the root causes be behind the need for those calls for service. Some think defunding the police is the answer. I'm here to tell you on behalf of our mayor and other mayors across the country and police chiefs across this country and the diverse communities that we serve, this is simply not the answer. Defunding the police without addressing the social economic reality faced by poor communities and the disenfranchised and how they are riddled with missteps which would increase the need for police services. History has shown that underfunding the police can have disastrous consequences and hurt those most in need of our services. Appropriate police funding is critical to ensure agencies have resources to invest in technology like body-worn cameras, recruit qualified police officers who are service-minded and train in implicit bias, train in cultural competency, train in de-escalation and other critical training. The overwhelming majority of cops are good people. This cannot be lost. They are faithful public servants who put their uniform on every day, willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. We can't let, again, the actions of bad cops let us lose sight of the fact that most cops are good. We must all judge each other through the prism and content of our individual hearts and actions, and not through the prism of color and the uniform that we wear. While there is no national use of force standard and previous efforts at establishing one were met with this agreement, several components are ubiquitous throughout the U.S. Prioritization of the sanctity of life, duty to intervene, and the use of de-escalation tactics and techniques is a must. Let me be clear. The actions of the four officers involved in the death of Mr. Floyd are inconsistent, unjustified, 
and repulsive. They are contrary to the protocols of the policing profession and they sabotage the law enforcement community's tireless efforts to build trust. Moving our profession forward begins with a sustained commitment to accountability. From the start of academy training, recruits must understand that they have an, absolutely, an absolute duty to put public safety, service, and security first. In the Houston Police Department, we instill in our men and women the certainty that policy violations regarding truthfulness will lead to termination, or as we put it, if you lie, you die. It is important to note that every chief's administrative authorities are different across the nation, and that not everyone has the legal authority to take immediate action like Chief Arredondo did. I am encouraged what there have been eras in America's history when police have found it difficult to speak up. We are speaking up today. But let it be clear, for many years, officers have consistently been holding one another accountable, and complaints about police misconduct overwhelmingly originate from within agencies, not from members of the community. Communities have an absolute responsibility as well. We ask citizens to report police misconduct without fail. This will afford us the opportunity to investigate, track, and report those complaints. We must also address the issue of officers who have been terminated with cause only to get rehired by another department. Many of us refer to these individuals as gypsy cops. Many gypsy cops have exhibited troubling behavior and that in turn undermines efforts to build trust with the public and efforts to, in terms of internal department accountability. Transparency breeds trust and trust breeds respect. Mutual trust and respect between law enforcement and the public is crucial to good policing. The civil unrest occurring throughout our nation and throughout this entire country is a sobering reminder of how quickly we will lose uh, public trust and the, the consequences of that fact. Ensuring the department looks more like the communities we serve helps build trust and confidence. Unique perspectives and insights help a department and several, uh, help a department lead and serve the communities of color. I'm happy to report that the Major City Chiefs Association has several departments now that are minority majority like the city of Houston and the Houston Police Department and are reflective of the communities that we serve. On behalf of the Major City Chiefs, I want America to know that we hear you. We will continue to do everything in our power to facilitate your right to peacefully protest. The MCCA will not shy away from this challenge and will continue to be a leader and voice in the national discourse and race relations, policing, and reform. To the Floyd family and to the activists across the nation, our commitment is to be your voice, to join you, and to make sure that Mr. Floyd's death was not in vain. I yield the remainder of my time and look forward to any questions the committee may have. Thank, Thank you. you, Chief.